So as we discussed previously in GMM, the underlying density function of a data set or an underlying distribution of a data set is approximated as a simple linear superposition of the Gaussian components. So in GMM, we have to specify the number of Gaussians k, which is a hyperparameter of the algorithm. So it's a parametric unsupervised machine learning algorithm. It's a clustering algorithm. Uh, so in Gaussian machine model, as the name suggests, uh, a GMM is a mixture of k different Gaussians so if you have a data set uh, xi where each of the xi is an n dimension real vector and i goes from 1 to m that is we have a data set of m data points where each of data points is an n dimension real vector then each of the Gaussian component is going to be multivariate Gaussian so each of the Gaussian g i with mean mu i and covariance matrix sigma i is going to be 1 over 2 pi to the power n by 2 a determinant of sigma i to the power 1 by 2 times e raised to the power negative of x minus mu i transpose times sigma inverse x minus mu i by 2 or we can write it as uh, or we can write it more formally as uh, g of x parameterized by mu i sigma i so we are uh, so here we have removed the subscript i and we have just taken the subscript uh, in the parameters mu and sigma i to denote that this Gaussian is parameterized by the mean mu i and covariance matrix sigma i is given by this formula over here where x is an n dimensional real vector and i goes from 1 to k where k is a number of Gaussian components. So when we discuss the data set and the Gaussian components in the same context, we'll use different subscript. So here we are using the subscript i to denote the number of data points and here we are using subscript i uh, to denote the number of the Gaussian components. So uh, given a data set d of data points x i where each of x i is an n dimension real vector for i goes from 1 to m so assume that this data set is generated by some true density function p of x uh, but we do not know what this p of x is so we have not observed p of x we only have observed the data set which is sampled from this density function or from this distribution so uh, if we are going to approximate it as a GMM, uh, then this density function under GMM is approximated as a sum, as a superposition of the Gaussian components in the GMM. So this density function P of X can be approximated as under GMM, the sum of the Gaussian components Here we will use a uh, indexing j because here we have used i for denoting the number uh, for accessing the data points in data set. So from j equal to 1 to k pi k times the normal distribution the Gaussian component x given mu i mu j and sigma j where this n denotes the normal distribution, the Gaussian distribution over here. We can just write this n as, uh, we can write this pi k g of x given mu k sigma k. Uh, 
or sum or all from j equal to 1 to k and here we have j instead of k just to be consistent with the uh, notations over here so just to uh, just to resummarize it uh, to avoid this clutter so we can approximate uh, this underlying density function p of x as a simple linear superposition of the gaussian components in the gmm by j here again like sorry it should have been j pi j times n of x given mu j sigma j where pi of j for j from 1 to k are known as the mixing coefficients with a constraint that sum over all j pi j is 1. So given a data set D of m data points x i which is generated uh, from some underlying true probability density function p of x and we would like to approximate uh, this p of x uh, then we can use one of the algorithms in the machine learning literature for example in the kernel density estimation lectures we approximated this underlying true density function using a kernel density estimator function. Here under GMM, so the machine learning literature provides us yet another algorithm which we can use to approximate the underlying true, uh, true probability distribution or probability density function that generated a particular data set. So here under GMM, uh, rather than approximating it uh, with a kernel density estimator, we approximate it as a simple linear superposition of the Gaussian components in our GMM with a constraint that the mixing coefficients sum to 1. So these mixing coefficients can be seen as a contribution of a particular Gaussian components uh, for explaining uh, the underlying data set D. These mixing coefficients can be seen as the contribution of a particular Gaussian component in the distribution or to explain the underlying distribution and each of these sigma i or sigma j so each of the sigma j is an n cross n covariance matrix where n is a dimensionality of the data set and each of the mu i mu j are n dimensional real vectors so each of the mu j are the respective means of the gaussian components and each of the uh, sigma j are the coherence matrices associated with the respective gaussians in the gmm so now we can take the discussion forward and see how all this theory uh, can be used to cluster a data set. So as discussed previously that uh, the GMM uh, approximates an underlying true density function of a data set by approximating it as a simple linear superposition of the Gaussian components in the GMM. So in previous lecture recall that we saw that given a data set D we could use a kernel density estimation and model the underlying complex perhaps a multimodal uh, distribution that generated the data in the data set D. 
and then we computed the clusters or computed the modes of the underlying true density function approximately computing the modes of the underlying true density function by computing the modes of the kernel density estimator function. So in the kernel density estimation lecture we resulted into the mean shift algorithm recall that we had a true density function which generated some data set but we never saw that density function but we had access to the data set generated from that density function and then rather than computing the modes of the true density function we computed the modes of the kernel density estimator which approximated the underlying true density and by doing so we were able to compute the number of clusters and associate every data point in the data set with the respective clusters that we had computed. So this entire process resulted into clustering the underlying data. Similarly, here in GMM, we can approximate the underlying data distribution via the GMM, uh, which is a simple linear superposition of its Gaussian components. And then we can learn the parameters of the Gaussians to effectively find out what data point belongs to which cluster in a GMM or which data point belongs to which Gaussian component. So similar to the density function, so similar to the kernel density estimation, so in kernel density estimation, we had a data set which is generated by some true distribution. Uh, we do not know what this function is. It's a complex multimodal uh, density function. Uh, but we observe the data set which is generated from this distribution or this density function. So we computed the modes. So we approximated it with the kernel density estimator function. where k is a kernel and h was a bandwidth parameter. And then we used this kernel density estimator function as a proxy for this true density function. And then we computed the modes of this density estimator to cluster the data set. Similarly, in GMM, we have a data set. We have an underlying true density function that generated this data set, but we do not have access to this density function. What we have access to is the data set. So, we approximate it as GMM k, where GMM k refers to approximating this density function with k different Gaussian components. And each of the Gaussian components has parameters mu i which is a mean, sigma i which is a covariance matrix and pi i the mixing coefficients for i from 1 to k. So these are the learnable parameters. So in the kernel density estimation lecture we didn't have any learnable parameter. We just use a simple grain descent rule to compute the modes of the underlying density function whereas in GMM we actually have parameters to learn. So we know that this density function can be approximated as k different Gaussian components but eventually each of those Gaussian components is going to result into some hyperparameters of the algorithm and by learning these parameters using the data set so we have m data points in the data set D and we can use these data points to find these parameters of the GMM. So these parameters define the underlying GMM. And also approximate the underlying true density function P of X. So they approximate the underlying true density function p of x that generated the data set d. So by learning these parameters we effectively learn uh, the Gaussians and by doing so we can associate every data point in this data set with one of the Gaussian components effectively clustering the data set and the way to do it is the uh, algorithm that we'll study next. So the mathematical steps in the GMM algorithm allow us to learn these parameters mu i, sigma i and pi i where mu is a mean vector, sigma is a covariance matrix and pi are the mixing coefficients. So by learning these parameters using the data set D, we 
find the Gaussian components and can find the clusters in the data set and associate every data point in the cluster with one of the Gaussian components effectively clustering the data set. So now we will study the mathematical steps that allow us to learn these parameters.